Okay, good morning, everybody. It's uh, February 2021, and we're talking about love in the second part, and how can we love better? Because all of our love and existence and being, all of our relationships <clears throat> should revolve around love. You know, Scripture says that love is patient, love is kind, it does not boast, it's not rude, it's not unbecoming, it's not selfish, it's not easily angered, it doesn't remember a whole list of wrongs. Love never gives up. Love never stops trusting. Love never quits. Love never loses hope. It endures all things, hopes all things, believes all things. Faith, hope, and love. And out of the greatest of these is love. Make love your aim. So out of 1 Corinthians 13, we've all heard that scripture before. So how can we love better? How can we actually apply this? And uh, I just want to start out by saying, this is my study that I'm bringing to you. So this, this was put together for me to learn more about love and uh, to bring it back to the men that I work with in my life. <clears throat> and I hope everybody gets something out of it and is blessed. So in 1 John 4.8, uh, it says, Whoever does not love does not know God because God is love. So why should we love? Because he loved us first. He gave his son for us, um, John three sixteen. everybody knows it. it, says, for God gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. So everybody's heard the scripture, but notice that the first thing he did was give. And if you read the scriptures, you'll notice the next thing that Jesus did everywhere he went was serve and heal and lift up. He never put people down. He never condemned them. He never carried offenses. He never held on to wrongs. He never convicted people and pointed at them. In fact, uh, if you remember at the well, um, he said, look, who, whoever, threw, who, whoever is without sin, throw the first stone. So love is, it's the rod for measuring spiritual maturity. The amount that we love, how we love in our life, this determines our spiritual maturity because the more we know Christ, the more we will love and be like him. Uh, so in 1 Corinthians 13, 1 and 2, it says, I, brothers, could not speak to you like spiritual, but only as to the carnal, as unto babes in Christ. Um, what he means by this is that he wants us to mature in the things of love and things of Christ, not to be babes in Christ, okay? Um, in Colossians 3, it talks about the filthy rags. Um, by verse 5 and 6, it says, Now you also put them aside, anger, wrath, malice, slander, and abusive speech from your mouth. And a lot of us do this in our home, in our marriages, in our family. We have people that practice emotional and verbal abuse to their spouses. So it's not only what love is and understanding what love is. We have to understand what love isn't. And so when you recognize you know, that abuse of speech, that wrath, jealousy, anger, slander, um, all kinds of nasty stuff that people say. Um, and we all, we all have done it. Uh, that isn't love. That's not how the love of God works, the agape love of Christ. This is what we're talking about, the agape love. And we know there's different kinds of love. We'll get to that. All right, so love is patient, the quality of constantly being concerned about the other person's welfare without yielding to weariness. Um, Galatians 6, 9 refers to that. Kindness, the quality of being tender in heart, speech and action. Ephesians 4, 32. It doesn't envy the quality of not feeling jealous of what others have or become. Proverbs 14, 30. It doesn't boast the quality of not telling one's own achievements, possessions, abilities with excessive pride. Philippians 2, 3. It's not proud, the quality of being approachable, not arrogant, overbearing, it's not rude, the quality of being genuinely and courteously polite in speech. Proverbs 15, 1, we all ought to walk with a uh, love walk. As it says in Ephesians 5, 1, we ought to speak with uh, gracious, gracious words. Um, uh, Colossians 4, verses uh, 3 and 4 talks about how we should speak with graciousness, which means uh, with mercy and kindness on our voice. Um, we should include people and not exclude them. We should lift them up and not bring them down. Love is slow to anger. 
uh, keeps no records of wrongs. The quality of forgiving and not holding a grudge against the offender. Luke 6, 27. Slow to anger, the quality of being long-tempered is slowing, slowness to express anger. Ecclesiastes 7, 9. God doesn't rejoice in evil. The quality of not gloating over another person's failures. Galatians 6, 1. Uh, rejoices with the truth, the quality of rejoicing when truth is revealed in the lives of others. It bears all things, quality of putting up with everything if it's beneficial to the other person. You understand? So Galatians 6, 2. Uh, it believes all things, it hopes all things, the quality of being hopeful for those who have failed, will not fail again rather than concluding that failure is inevitable. John 21, 15. So we don't expect somebody to keep on failing once they understand. We hope all things. We endure all things, the quality of not allowing oneself to become overwhelmed, but persevere steadfastly through difficult trials. Anyway, this is the kind of love that Christ loved us with and that we ought to be imitating as per Ephesians 5.1, uh, how's our love walk? All of these characteristics were evident uh, throughout his childhood, his public ministry and his suffering. So anyway, <clears throat> how does love behave? So Colossians 3, 5 to 8, it speaks about what we should act like um, when we're putting on love. And it talks about the filthy rags. We talked about that already. Anger, malice, slander, jealousy, uh, rudeness, that type of thing. But what it says that we should put on as new, new clothes in Christ is this. So as those who have been chosen of God, holy and beloved, put on a heart of compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness and patience, bearing with one another and forgiving each other. Whoever has a complaint against anyone, just as the Lord forgave you, so also should you. Beyond all these things, put on love, which is the perfect bond of unity. <clears throat> Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts to which indeed you were called in one body and be thankful. So when we don't forgive each other, there's a division between us and we don't want that. We want to be in perfect unity because uh, love is the perfect bond of unity. But it's something that we have to put on. We have to consciously put it on. We have to put off the filthy rags. And that's how we allow the peace of Christ that rules in our hearts. I mean, he is the Prince of Peace. We want that in our hearts. We want to <clears throat> be in an attitude of thankfulness and gratitude uh, to each other and, and to the Lord. He says compassion, uh, to care for one another. Uh, with kindness and humility, uh, not boastfulness, with gentleness and patience, uh, bearing all things and forgiving each other. <clears> that <throat> forgiveness is so important. If you walk around holding unforgiveness and holding pain and hurt, let it go. Give it to God because he forgave you. Um, and he says that if you have a grievance against another, in Matthew 5, um, I believe it's verse 27, <clears throat> he says, just go and make up with your brother, you know, uh, let go of the offense and then come back and uh, give your offering. But until then, put your offering down. So he, does, he doesn't want our alms and tithes when we're sitting in unforgiveness. Okay, <clears throat> so talked about uh, faith, hope, and love. The greatest of these is love, 1 Corinthians 13, 4. Um, we've talked about, um, so, so the concept of love is void of fear shouldn't be fear. 1 Peter 4, 8, um, perfect love casts out all fear, okay? Uh, because fear involves punishment, and the one who fears is not perfected in love. We're loved because he first loved us, 1 John 4, 18. That's why we love, because he first loved us. Um, and this commandment we have from him, that the one who loves God should love his brother also. So I've heard it said that I have no obligation to love. In fact, there's an entire church that has instructed its people to to tell those that that it has deemed inappropriate or out i have no obligation and that is a flat out lie from the pit of hell first john 4 18 makes it clear it says the one who loves god should love his brother also we know the first commandment says love the lord your god with all your heart mind and soul and your neighbor is yourself that tells me we ought to love our neighbors um okay so 1 Corinthians uh, 16, 14. Therefore, a man shall leave his father and his mother and hold fast to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. Right? Ephesians 5, 25. Do everything in love. 
Okay. Romans 13, 8 for husbands. This means love your wives just as Christ loved the church. He gave up his life for her. Amen. That's huge. Um, owe no man anything except to love. So we have no debt. We have no obligation in this life except love. That we owe to love each other. For the one who loves another has fulfilled the law. Mark 10, 9. Therefore, what God has joined together, let no man separate. So you understand it's like um, the Hebrew word for where it says, uh, let no man put asunder what God has joined together. That word asunder is a joining. It's a, it's a combining of lives and hearts and minds and souls and spirit. When two lives come together in marriage, um, sanctified by God, and then they're ripped apart by divorce, there are many, many involved. The entire family is involved, and there's like a violent ripping of flesh that's almost worse than the grievance of losing somebody in your life. Why? Because many, many more people are affected, and it's, it's you're still alive, and you still have this death all about you. That's why it takes so long to heal from divorce. Uh, and only God's love can fill that kind of pain. So, uh, and over all these virtues, put on love, which binds them all together in perfect unity. Colossians 3.14, 1 John 2.9, anyone who claims to be in the light but has a brother or sister is still in the darkness. Anyone who loves their brother and sister lives in the light and there's nothing in them to make them stumble. Say it again. Anyone who claims to be in the light but hates his brother or sister is still in the darkness. Anyone who loves their brother and sister lives in the light and there's nothing in them. So if you hate, if you've got hate in you, you're in the darkness, my friend. Come out, join the light. Uh, you know, light light exposes all things uh, in the darkness. Psalm 143. Let the morning bring me word of your unfailing love, for I have put my trust in you. Show me the way I ought to go, for to you I entrust my life. That's good. First John 4, 8. Whoever does not love does not know God, because God is love. Amen. This is good. This is good stuff. You know, we could all we could all learn something from this. Um, I certainly have. I hope you have enjoyed it as to what love is, what love isn't. My prayer for Valentine's Day. Uh, by the way, uh, St. Valentine, he would marry uh, Roman soldiers against the Roman law. This is uh, way, 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 way back. And so Valentine was the, the marrier, the, the romance guy who would who would rebel sort of a rebellious guy, and he was put to death for that, which is why we have St. Valentine and why we celebrate Valentine's Day. Um, <clears throat> anyway, so, love. So, agape love of God. Um, there are many kinds of love. Uh, it's, you have the eros love, which is a romantic love. You have the um, agape love, which is the perfect love of God. Uh, you have the phylos love, which is the uh, well, phileo, the, 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 the friendship type love. And there's there's one more. I just uh, forgot what it is. Okay, well, that, that's enough about love for today. Let's, let's practice it. Let's work on it. Let's actually be it. Let's not be a noisy gong because without love, you know, all of our all of our acts of service and everything are nothing but filthy rags and, and useless. So we actually get to put uh, put our love to action and deeds. Okay, God bless you. I love you guys.